Hello everyone and welcome back. Um, today I wanted to go over why it's a good idea to um, have houseplants. I love plants. I know a lot of you do too. And um, I have a few. Uh, nothing excessive. But um, this is a great time to talk about the benefits of having house plants because most of us are still um, spending quite a bit of time at home hopefully not as much as we were in the not too distant past but um, if we're gonna have to spend a lot of time in our houses we we might as well um, make the best of it and have good things in our surroundings so um, I'm going to show you the plants that I have and um, we'll just go over the benefits of having them. Now I hope the light cooperates but um, we're in my bedroom and this is where I have most of my plants because I have this bigger or good size window seat here and the window is behind the door so bright that it you know it sometimes will make the plants themselves darker so I'm I'm hoping once I get a little closer you'll be able to see them better now this is an easy plant to grow this here is a um, I call it a mother-in-law's tongue but it's a snake thing a snake plant um, it'll get the name mother-in-law's tongue because on the sides here they're kind of sharp but um, it's, it's a, I'd say, medium growth plant. You know, um, it's not really slow, but it's definitely not quick. But it can get fairly big. It will turn into a floor plant. Um, I did have one a few years back, and it got well over four feet tall, and it kept falling on me. I ended up having to give it away. But... Um, the interesting thing with this particular plant is that it gives off oxygen only at night. And so um, quite a few people will put these in their bedrooms, you know, so they uh, get that extra boost of oxygen at night. Now over here is a jade plant. Um, a lot of people are familiar with these. They're great plants. Um, they do need a decent amount of light. Doesn't have to be direct sunlight, but they like it a little bit brighter. And when you can see here how they're reaching up. That's good. That means they are getting enough light. If they all, you know, tend to go down, like down here, that means they're not getting enough light. And uh, it's an interesting plant. It's a succulent. And it, like I said, they're very easy to take care of. And they're just a nice plant to have. And right next to that, I have this cactus. And this is a very slow growing plant. Um, this cactus I have had for, I'd say, 12 years now. And it has all these little babies down there. And I don't know if it really does anything for, um, you know, the air quality. But it is such an interesting plant. And I didn't kill it. <laughs> so that makes it great to me. Um, it does, It the name of it is like a very long Hispanic name, so I, I can't really tell you. And I don't think it has like any type of nicknames. But it's a great plant. It started off by itself, oh, I want to say only this tall. And then it's, it's grown that tall um, in the 12 years. And it's only been in, I'd say, the last, oh, geez. A year or two that these smaller ones have come up and they start off very small and um, you know they're getting a little bit bigger but I don't think this particular cactus will get much higher than three feet or so at least indoors 
and of course you don't need to water it very much um, you don't want it to be real cold so in the winter here I would take it away from this window just in case of any kind of drafts and you really don't need to fertilize um, cactuses either you do want to give them um, a specific type of soil something very loose that preferably has sand in it but otherwise you know the taller they get you just pot them up every few years and it's a really great plant to have it's unique and different and I like it and then we have this one here this is a compact dragon tree now it's in flower right now let's see if I can show you a close-up these flowers smell so beautiful I can't even tell you guys it smells like a very heady perfume and it's just lovely and the foliage on here is very nice this too I feel is an easier plant to take care of it will get bigger even though it's called compact it will eventually um, get to four maybe five feet tall it will be a, a floor plant but for now you can see here this will be its like trunk and oftentimes these leaves will start to go bad and when they do you can easily pull them off and that's when the trunk there were leaves initially down here that just got old and needed to um, come off this plant does grow very slowly and it too really doesn't need fertilizer but it does need a decent amount of light but not direct sunlight next we have a variegated english ivy and it is it is growing pretty well it's gotten way down here and i could cut it back a little bit and i might um but for now that's where it is and um i think um it may be in a little bit too sunny of a spot it's not too bad though because I have trees directly outside so it gets morning sun but as the afternoon comes the trees kind of block it a little bit and vining plants like this are some of the easiest plants to grow so if you are a beginner go ahead and get yourself an ivy and um, you know Put it in a spot that has I'd say medium light or a little medium to high but not direct sunlight and it should do well just make sure in the summer like with all plants you're gonna water them a little bit more if you're in a dry climate make sure to mist them because they all do well with you know higher humidity and if you're you're not in a uh, dry area but it's winter time do the same thing give them a, a mist of water every now and again or like a few times a week now over here on my dresser is a <laughs> very well grown um, philodendron and it's a heart shape one you know the leaves take on that heart shape and it really does need to be cut back and this plant in particular, I think, could benefit from a little bit more light. With philodendrons, when they get a, a good amount of light, the leaves get bigger. And if you can see this leaf over here, let's say, is a bit smaller than that. And they can grow kind of out of control like I just showed you. And so, yeah, you're going to want to cut them back. And if you get little like this just go ahead and take them off that's okay this is a new a new growth but like under here see this one is like yeah and it's fine it's gonna lo lose some leaves here and there again make sure it's decently watered most plants like to dry out a little bit in between waterings no plants that I know of 
at least house plants, um, <clears throat> excuse me, like to be wet all the time. So don't overwater them. Stick your finger down in there, and if about an inch or so down it's dry, then go ahead and water. But um, yeah, don't don't overdo it with this plant. Although it's really hard to kill one of these, you know, if you forget to water. Or one week you water just a little too much, that's okay, it'll survive. Okay, we've moved on to the living room area. And this is known as a cornstalk plant. It's in the same family as that dragon plant in there. Only this, this will get really big too. But it's a slow grower. And it will eventually, you know, depending on how long you have it and put it in a bigger pot, it'll grow um, like a small hedge and this too doesn't really need fertilizer a lot of plants benefit from a liquid fertilizer um, during their growing months which is usually summer spring you know through summer but this is not one of them and it too is a fairly easy plant to grow it um, doesn't need a ton of sunlight it gets um, good indirect light here and it is you know growing some new leaves right now but um, I put it in this pot last year when I got it when I came home from the store and I don't think it's going to need to be repotted probably till at least next year maybe even a little longer not sure yet but it's a great looking plant I love the variegated foliage on it you know and it just um, is easy to take care of now over here on uh, my um, I don't know breakfast counter <laughs> this is a newer plant I have um, it's called a crispy wave or bird's nest fern now as you can see there's some boo-boos here and this is my fault because I had it in a different area and it was getting too much light it is um, a low light plant and according to that NASA list this is like one of the best plants you can get for cleaning toxins out of the air including formaldehyde and putting oxygen back in there's a lot of surface on here and it's such a cool looking plant you know we have a lot of chemicals in our house that we don't even think of besides um, you know the chemicals we use to clean with um, almost every time you buy something new there's chemicals on it and depending on what it is, it can take months and months to get those chemicals out of your environment. For instance, you buy a new throw rug, um, that's going to take around six months to get rid of those toxins that are on that rug out of your home. So it, um, you really should wash brand new clothes when you get them and bedding and stuff like that and curtains and because all of them are treated with chemicals and that will help and it's good this time of year to have your windows open help clean that kind of stuff out and to have some great plants like this around over here I have a pothos this is a golden pothos and it's actually not in a good spot <laughs> it needs more light than what's here um, but I took this, it isn't even planted yet, I, I got a pot here I'm going to be putting it in. But I took cuttings from um, a plant at church. And um, I was told that that plant at church is uh, at least 15 years old and it's still going strong. So I got a couple of them, the cuttings here and as you can see I put them in a glass of water. And over time they develop a great root system and as you can see the plants themselves the leaves they look beautiful so I am gonna put them in um, soil 
and uh, that's going to be a little bit of a shock to them, so I'm going to treat them real well <laughs> until they're established. But yeah, you can get cuttings off of so many different plants, and this is another vining plant that is super easy to grow, great for beginners, awesome for its air cleaning abilities. Okay, now we are in the kids' room, and look at the size of this aloe vera plant I have. I just, you know, and look how it's growing. It's like tipping. I ha I, it was the other way I moved it. I'm trying to get it to go upright again, but I sincerely doubt that it will. Um, every time I get an aloe, it ends up growing really giant and it'll be top heavy and tip over the pot. I gave away my last one, it was just too huge. But this is this, this pot I bought specifically for this aloe because it's more square. So if you're going to do aloes or if they're a larger plant and you're potting up, make sure you either get a square pot like this or if it, if it is a um, round pot, make sure it doesn't taper down. You know, let the, the top of the pot be roughly the same size as the bottom and that will definitely help to stabilize um, the aloe and uh, I guess I really don't have to tell you guys why you should grow aloe right I mean you got anything wrong or not right with your skin you want one of these anything from a cut or a burn to wrinkles it will help immensely and so yeah it's it's grown pretty good here and it but it does need a decent amount of light and that's why it's in this room because this room does get the most amount of light and it really is uh, benefiting from it and aloes of course are in the succulent family so they don't need to be watered a lot so even in the summertime I would still say water this about half the time you do your normal house plants or your non-succulent house plants and then here is another plant that loves light and this is a really pretty one it's got the purple here and this is a wandering Jew now can you see how these there's two of them that come down like this and then they're at the bottom here there's another one over there um, the wandering Jew plant usually doesn't last a very long time like um, pothos can oh my goodness live for years and years and years well the wandering Jew will eventually get to the point where it's all of these things which is not necessarily a good thing and I am going to be cutting these off pretty soon because I want this to bush out more and um, so when it gets to the point where this won't bush anymore and I only get these long tendril things, <clears throat> then I think it's time to compost the plant. But it's such a beautiful plant and there's a lot of different varieties to choose from with these um, particular plants and the, the colors can be stunning. Okay, you guys, I saved the biggest for last. Look at the size of that um, peace lily. Now, most of the peace lilies I've ever grown were not huge like this. This is my son's plant, and it's in his room, and he must have the cleanest air ever in here with the size of this plant. Peace lilies are awesome for cleaning the air. And they're such an easy plant to take care of most of the time. Um, they don't like direct sunlight and they don't like a lot of it. They're a great lower light plant. And he's got it in front of a window here, but um, the blind comes down quite a bit and he'll pull it down usually even a little bit more. But this is an east facing window with... Um, you know trees and stuff out there so it doesn't get too much light um, the size of these leaves are incredible they're just I'm very proud of him for growing it I mean I gave him this plant as a housewarming gift 
um, a few years ago and just the height of it you know and he'll have so many flowers going on here as you can see this one right here is starting off green Dave it will go white like this but uh, I remember last summer he had like I want to say 13 flowers on here at once and he does um, fertilize it I'm not quite sure how often but it does take a lot of water you know you got to keep up with that with these okay so if you have any questions about any of the plants um, go ahead and put them down in comments I'd be more than happy to answer them for you but if uh, you're a grower you know you have these plants at home and you've got some great tips to share that would be awesome of you I'm sure we'd all love to hear about it um, I might put a few more links in the description box so you can go ahead and check that out and I just wanted to say that besides cleaning the air in that house plants are just so nice to have because they add that little bit of life to the room you know you can have some of the most beautiful decorations but plants really do um, add that little something special to it you know you can have a room that looks great but once you add a plant or two to it it's like now it now it looks wonderful now it looks complete you know what I mean and um, they just seem to soften things up so anyhow leave me a comment I want to hear how it's going let me know about your plants it was nice talking to you and you take care